More phone calls coming up. Brian Greasy, former NFL quarterback, ESPN Monday Night Football analyst. He'll be on the call with Lewis Riddick and Steve Levy. Monday Night Playoff Football. It'll be the Cardinals and the Rams. Brian, good to have you back. Um, biggest question mark you have going into this Cardinals Rams game is what? Yeah, is is will the will the Cardinals Dan be able to handle Aaron Donald? Um, they were not able to handle him in the second meeting, uh, and it was a big reason why Kyler Murray felt a lot of pressure and and had two interceptions in that game, and that that was the difference in the game. Uh, they they were driving early. Uh, they had a tip from Aaron Donald, intercepted by Ernest Jones, no points, and the Rams go right down and score. And then to start the second half, um, they had a great play from Leonard Floyd, tipped interception. Um, and that pressure on Kyler Murray on the field, I think, impacted him. Now, you could also wonder, and the question is about the pressure on Kyler Murray off the field. First playoff game in his career, uh, there's been a lot of time, energy, uh, an effort put into building this team by Steve Kime. They're finally in this position. It's not where they want it to be as a wild card team. I remember about a month ago, this was the number one seed in the NFC, uh, and they're kind of limping in, losers of four or five. So how will they respond to the big moment also is a question for me. But when you have pressure up the middle and you're Kyler Murray, how different is that pressure up the middle in your Tom Brady? Well, I think the, the, the approach for Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator for the Rams, number one is to try to keep Kyler Murray in the pocket. Um, so it's very, I mean, it's completely different than Tom Brady. Tom's going to be in there. You know where he's going to be. Um, Kyler Murray, you know, job number one is keeping him in the pocket because he is dangerous and he will beat you outside the pocket. They were, they had mixed results with that uh, this year. Um, but when he gets outside the pocket, he can hurt you with his legs uh, more than anybody in the league. And, uh, and so what I think the Rams have with Von Miller and Leonard Floyd up, up on, the, on the edges uh, is, is good enough to contain him. And then you add in Aaron Donald on the inside. That's what's unique about the Rams pass rush. Uh, and that's why they were successful in the second meeting. How would you grade Matthew Stafford's first season in L.A.? Uh. I right as of right now, I'd say it's about a B. And uh, listen, this team won the NFC West. Nobody's given them that kind of credit. They won 12 games. Um, really, his grade will be dependent upon what happens in the next month. Didn't they have a um, B quarterback already, Brian? No, nah, I wouldn't say that. I would say they had a B minus C plus quarterback okay. in Jared Goff. Okay. Um, so I, I think they, there's no doubt they have upgraded the position. And Matthew Stafford has made some unbelievable plays and won them games, Dan. Now, he's also, you know, been careless with the ball, and he's tried to make plays when they weren't there. Um, and, and so as they get into the playoffs, they need to take a little bit off of Matthew Stafford's plate, run the football, and then when the play is there to be made, we know that he has the ability to make them. Yeah, I wondered if Matthew Stafford was trying on almost every play I want to prove to everybody it was Detroit that was the problem, not me. I was there, didn't win a playoff game, 12 years. Hey, let me get on a winning team, and I'm going to show you. And and maybe he got out of his comfort zone a little bit. And, you know, but you have four pick sixes. How do you explain that? 17 interceptions, four of those were pick sixes. Is that just, yeah. you know, by luck, by chance? No, I think it's a quarterback trying to do too much. I think you're right. Um, you know, I think – this is a team that not only do they feel like they have to win, but dangerous for them. They feel like they have to win with style. And, and that's not – listen, we're not talking about the San Francisco 49ers like that. They don't care how they win. They just want to go out and win. But the Rams, being in L.A., got a lot of bright, shiny toys, uh, and, and the first half of the season couldn't have gone any better. Uh, in the marriage between Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford, you got the best receiver in the league in Cooper Cup. You got Odell out there, and you and you want to have some style. You want to have pizzazz, and I think that Matthew Stafford, from time to time, call it five, six, seven plays a game, will force the issue, and that's where he's got into trouble. And I, I don't think that he needs to do that for them to win. Pro Football Focus released its ranking top 10 NFL players to start a franchise with 2022. Number one on the list, Patrick Mahomes. Number two on the list, who would you pick? Start your franchise with in 2022. 
you know, it'd be hard. I'd be hard pressed to um, to pass up Josh Allen or, or Joe Burrow. Joe, those are two of the Joe Burrow's of the top quarterbacks. Joe Burrow's yeah. two. Those are two of the top quarterbacks, in my opinion, uh, young quarterbacks in the league. Justin Herbert is three. Josh Allen good, four. Great argument for Justin as well. Um, you know, any, any one of those three, in, in my opinion, um, you could build around. Uh, listen, I, I'm excited to watch. Now we're going to find out about Josh Allen and Joe Burrow here in the next in the next week and a half, two weeks. Um, you know, Josh Allen playing Bill Belichick for the third time uh, in a season. Can't wait to watch that. And, and Joe Burrow's first opportunity. And and listen, I know that you know the the Raiders have kind of squeaked their way in, but that'll be a challenge for for Joe Burrow. So uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with any of those. Okay, I'll continue this. Kyler Murray is fifth on Pro Football Focus quarterback that you would start your franchise with. Now, age, of course, is a factor in all of this. Dak Prescott is sixth. Trevor Lawrence is seven. Justin Fields, eight. Mac Jones is nine. Lamar Jackson, 10. Any issues? Uh, I, I don't feel as good about any of those as I do about Herbert, Pearl, and Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was surprised Justin Fields was up there. I mean, that's pretty elevated uh, status for somebody who has had basically one quarter of really impressive football. Yeah, listen, we did we did Justin Fields uh, twice this year. And, um, and just sitting with him, talking with him, watching him on the field, uh, he has everything that you're looking for. It's hard to evaluate in, in that situation that he's had in Chicago. Uh, with the supporting cast, the coaching and everything, the tumult in the front office. Uh, I, I hope that they get stable uh, in that organization and give them an opportunity uh, to see what he can really become. But uh, all of those that you just mentioned in that second tier have have questions, Dan. And um, uh, so, you know, to start a franchise with any one of those guys, um, there's questions involved. Paulie, uh, would you check, has anybody used tumult on this program before. Uh, just Michigan guys, Dan. <laughs> oh, okay. so Rich Eisen would probably use Tumult. Right. Jim Harbaugh would not use that. By the way, you think Harbaugh flirting with the NFL, you okay with that as a Michigan grad? Um, listen, I, I, I'm always in favor of guys maximizing their, their value, and it's that time of year, <laughs> if you know what I mean. What if you lose him, Brian? Um, listen, if, if we lose him, um, then we lose him, you know, like I, I'm not, I'm not one of those Michigan grads. I'm not like Eisen that, you know, his, his, every single day he wakes up, you know, whether he's in a good mood or bad mood is how Michigan is doing and whether Harbaugh's staying or gone. That, that's not me. Well, if he leaves, we'll find someone else. Well, weather and, uh, you know, the problems that that presents, Brady's probably going to have high winds and rain. Uh, the quarterbacks in Buffalo are just going to have the freezing cold there. I don't know if any other teams are going to uh, have to factor in weather there. But if I said you're playing in wind and rain, or you're going to play in just bitterly cold weather as a quarterback, which one would you pick? Yeah, just give me the cold. You know, the cold, listen, uh, selfishly for a quarterback, it's it's really not an impact. Now, it's an impact for the guys catching that rock-hard ball. <laughs> uh, and it is slick, but uh, – but no, the, the wind and the rain is just not a good combination. And, and that I think of all the games, that game will be impacted most by the weather. Uh, we know the Eagles want to run the ball. And I'm excited to watch that Eagles offensive line against the defensive front for uh, for the Bucks. I mean, Vita Vea and Jason Kelsey, what a great – like if, if you're a fan of football and you're watching the games this weekend, just watch Jason Kelsey, the center for the Eagles, and Vita Vea. Now, now it's a mismatch from a size standpoint – but the Wiley vet and Kelsey and the, and the position and the leverage and all those things, um, that's what I'm going to be watching. I know everybody else is going to be watching, you know, Jalen Hurts and Tom Brady and, and all. But, but to me, Jordan Mailata, the left tackle uh, against JPP and Shaq Barrett coming off an injury, um, I, I think you're going to get a good shot from the Eagles. They're not going to lay down. And, and the, the Bucks have some question marks that need to be answered. And, and we talked with Bruce Arians twice this year. And he says, listen, nobody's going to run the ball on us. Okay, all right, well, we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a different challenge on, on this weekend. How would you doctor up the football in cold weather as a quarterback? What would you use? Despite deflating it, Dan? <laughs> Did you ever deflate a football? 
Uh, yes, actually. Uh, you know, if it gets cold, um, you want to take more air out of the ball because the ball gets really hard. But how do you cold. do that, though? Well, you have a little, you have a needle, and you take a little bit of the air out of the needle. Yeah, but you're not allowed to guidelines. do that. You're not allowed to do. Now you have somebody who does this for you. Correct. Yeah, the 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 uh, the guys, uh, the equipment managers, they're the ones that take care of the ball. All within the rules, Dan. Completely within the rules, all of it. <laughs> But you know you gotta you gotta get up to that level. You gotta get to that line. But you want to be able to feel the ball. Your hands are already frozen. The ball's frozen, and it gets slick. The only thing that you can do is if you take a little air, you can squeeze the ball a little bit easier, and then you can feel it better. That's that's why quarterbacks do that. But did Brady do anything that other quarterbacks don't do? I don't think so. No. I mean, I think I think you're you're constantly trying to find what works for you. Um, now you, now there is that line that you go up to, and then sometimes guys will cross over it. Um, but you're always trying to find that advantage. But were they checking back then? You know, back then, Dan, it was interesting. Uh, there, the rules were different. Um, there was a time period where you had to take the balls out of the packaging. It had to be brand new, oh. like out of the, out of the box and out of the packaging. And I remember uh, I was so frustrated one time we were playing a game. Tony Carrenti, uh, who's still working, uh, can't, comes into the locker room, and, and he was making sure that the balls that we were using on offense were coming right out of the box. I'm like, Tony, like, let, let my guys just work them over. Let's just brush them a little bit because they come out with a, a film on them. They're really slick, and it's impossible to throw that ball. Um, and I, and, you know, I think Tom and Peyton got together and they kind of lobbied the league to get rid of that rule, which was the dumbest rule, uh, that we have ever had for quarterbacks and for offensive play. Cause you got guys going back to throwing the ball, slipping out of their hands and nobody wants to watch that. Um, so the rules have changed. Um, and, uh, I think it's in a good place now, but you know, I look at this and, uh, and it just seems like somebody rational will just say, um, the quarterback can have the ball that he wants, and the quarterback can have the ball that he wants. There's no advantage there. There's no, you know, deception. There's no nothing. It's this is how you want the football for your team. This is how you want the ball for your team. Doesn't that seem yeah. logical? It does seem logical, uh, you know, and, and um, but you know how uh, this league is. It's cookie cutter, and they want everything by the book, and they want everything the same. And and uh, But I, you certainly, Dan, could make a logical argument that, hey, let the quarterback have it however yeah. he wants it. But you didn't learn to cheat at Michigan. You learned this when you got to the NFL. Who, why, why do you use that word? <laughs> oh, to gain an advantage, my bad. That word is so harsh, Dan. <laughs> as I said, as I said, and I was quoted, within the guidelines okay, of, of the course, rules. Okay, of course. That's, That's my bad. My bad. <laughs> okay, the game that we're going to be talking about on Tuesday is going to be what? You know, I think it will be the Dallas-San Francisco game. And, and a lot I of think people it's like be, San Francisco in this game. Yeah, listen, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, everybody is kind of getting on this bandwagon uh, after the second half of the season and what Kyle Shanahan has been able to do. Um, listen, the season did not start well for them at three and five. Uh, I think that they have figured out who they are. Listen, this is this is a this is not a trendy pick. It's not a fad. Um, if you've watched this team and we've we've done their games a couple of times, um, they are the team that will drag you, drag the opponent out to the deep end of the water, okay? And they're going to make it gritty and nasty. They're not going to let you play the kind of game that you want to play if you're Dallas, you know, spread it out and throw the ball all over the place. Um, they're going to see how long you can tread water because they've been treading water for eight weeks, and they know that they can live in that environment. Um, and so, listen, all the pressure is on Dallas. Listen, you know, Jerry, uh, at home, um, everything that they have done um, from, a, from a personnel standpoint, from a roster standpoint, um, there's all the pressure on Dallas. And, and this game is not going to be, be pretty. It's not going to be um, – I know everybody wants to talk about Micah Parsons and about Randy Gregory, about rushing the passer, getting to Jimmy Garoppolo. That is not what this game is going to be about. Kyle Shanahan is going to make it about how physical are you going to play are, are, your, are your weakest players, your weakest tacklers on your defense, who are your corners, right, on every defense, 
Trayvon Diggs, no, you're not going to be intercepting passes. I want to see if you can tackle Debo Samuel one-on-one. Jalen Ramsey got that test last week, okay? Uh, Anthony Brown, the other corner on the other side, do you want to tackle Elijah Mitchell on the perimeter? That, that's what this game is going to be about, and I think uh, that's what people are going to be talking about on Tuesday. Great stuff, Brian. Uh, my best to Leaves and, uh, and Lewis, and uh, we'll be watching on Monday night. All right, Dan, good to see you. That's uh, Brian Greasy. He didn't cheat. He just uh, within the rules, within the guidelines.